Hello and welcome to this Free Cheese episode 465. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Mark Augustiniak. What's up? Matt Sonar. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. This is season 10. That's right, we've been doing this for 10 years. And all season long, we are focusing on a single game per episode, talking about our time with it, talking about its place in history, and then ranking it against the rest of our season 10 list at thefreecheese.com slash the list. This week, our game is Star Fox Assault for the Nintendo GameCube. Before we jump into it, I would like to know, Mark, what animal would you want to represent you in Star Fox? Mr. Miyamoto has called you up on the phone. He said, Mark, congratulations, I'm transforming you into an animal for the upcoming Star Fox Zero reboot. Uh, what animal would you like to be? A bat. You took my answer, buddy. No, okay, f- you can have bat. I armadillo. Oh, that's good. Okay, very good. Matt, what animal would you like to be representing you in puppet form? I'm going to stick with uh, some Baltimore origins here and say a raven. Oh, very good. All right. That's, we got a well-rounded Star Fox reboot uh, just burning at the edges here. Uh, also, congratulations on revealing your first personas well, yet again. Tri- I know. It's not tri- the first time we've gone down you, that. Typically, Coyote is my first choice. But <laughs> it's like you have a fox and a wolf already. It's already, you know. Yeah, I was thinking- yeah tell that to Mark the Rooster. <laughs> Slimy. <laughs> I Star Fox. We're just we're gonna get into Star Fox because I don't know about you two, and I want to know. But playing Star Fox Assault kind of reinvigorated a love I did not know that I had, and I want to talk about it. Before I talk about it, though, let's talk first about uh, a little bit of the game's background and origins. First released February 14th, 2005 for the Nintendo GameCube. Developed by Namco Limited, published by Nintendo of America. Uh, At least in America, it's published by Nintendo. Developed by Namco. Back of the box reads, It's been several years since disaster was averted on Dinosaur Planet, and Andross's armies have been almost eradicated. But now a new threat has a has risen from the darkness of space. The Aparoids, creatures bent on assimilating all beasts and machines into their corrupted hive mind, are spreading relentlessly, and Team Star Fox is the only thing standing between them and the utter ruin of the Lilat system. There's your setup. There's your villain. This is the first game? Mark, you have to fill in the gaps on adventure, but this is the first game that does not feature Andros as the main antagonist. Is that correct, or did Adventure also do that? Uh, so, uh, listeners, spoilers in three, two. <laughs> so they try to make you think Andros isn't in the game at all, and turns out he was been puppeteering the main boss, like General Scales or something like that. So uh, the very, very final fight is a classic Andross fight. Okay. Is that a metaphor just for the development of that game? Probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, okay, so, but after that, he's dead, right? Like, they, he's done. We, here in Assault, we do have no Andross, unless there's some weird secret that I didn't unlock. Yeah, I... That's technically the last time we saw Andros. I think it's funny the back of the box mentions uh, Star Fox Adventures. Probably because that was, at that point, probably the most recent, quote, Star Fox game. Yeah. Um, but I feel, I feel like 64 would have been a better reference. Yeah. I mean, I think 64 probably is the, at the time, and I think still probably is the one that people most strongly align with. Right. But but I that guess point, for Crystal's sake, they had to... I was going to say, Crystal, and there is some direct like continuity between 
you know, there's some level throwbacks and things within this one that, that yeah. I think go there. So, uh, as always, I, I kind of kept a running tab of notes as I played through the game that I'll, I'll refer to. And I also dug up some old magazine articles and online publications talking about Star Fox Assault at the time. Um, kind of a tumultuous road to release. Um, the game did not show very well in its first outing at E3, uh, but I think subsequently turned itself around a little bit. Um, however, I, I guess to start, I, I kind of, you know, prefaced this whole conversation by saying I quite enjoyed Star Fox Assault, and I'm sad that there wasn't a sequel. Um, overall, I, I think it was a really fun game and a really fun Star Fox game with you know, some things I learned about what I want out of Star Fox uh, applied directly here throughout. But um, yeah, Mark, what's your overall, this was your pick for the list. What's your overall feelings towards Star Fox Assault? Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I picked this because, just to start it off, um, way back, I did get this day one. This was, you know, uh, not every EB Games was a GameStop just yet, and uh, pre-ordering was, like, the thing to do. Um, so this is definitely one of the few games I did pre-order. Uh, I don't know if I played hooky in school for this to go pick it up, or I just picked it up as soon as I could. And I just remember playing through it and... Uh, I think overall I I did enjoy it. I think I enjoyed it a little more back then versus now, but that makes sense because a lot of things have happened since, you know, experience, game taste change, whatever. But um yeah, I don't know. It was it, it was always fine. It it was never like a I love this game to death type of game, but um yeah, I don't know. Just it was just fine. Uh it it tried some new things. I think it handled it pretty well. The the multiplayer was surprisingly fun um at the time. Yeah. Matt, what about you? Your overall kind of impressions? I think it's a solid <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Uh, I think it's a solid little package. Um it has problems. Uh, I'm not going to be shy about that, but I think, like, the overall game, I kind of enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the spoilers for Assault, but, like, I also enjoyed the story was was going there until the, the fucking after the credits rolled. But, you know, that's another thing. But, <laughs> um, no, yeah. I, I, um, no, I, I like it. I, I think I, I fit right into that category of what you said earlier, where, like, 64 is the renowned ones like 64 i probably i don't remember any of it at all but i know i loved that game i was playing through it and i liked the the pathing stuff so i was a little disappointed when this didn't really incorporate that kind of stuff uh, and it was just kind of like mission one two three four or whatever um but no i think i i think just flying with Star Fox and the team is when this game is at its best unfortunately when you lower yourself into the ground level the game has its lows but uh they're not they're not bad they're not bad they're just clunky mm -hmm. yeah it, it, like it could have been just a little tweaked like it, it really was just like <sighs> aiming was too i feel like if i there was a couple different control schemes but it it Maybe I'm wrong, and I just and I never hit pause. But I feel like I couldn't change my controller configuration midway. I would have to so, back all no, the way out to yeah. options or something. So I think yeah, that's why yeah. I never messed around with it because I would have tweaked. I would have played with each configuration around the fly to see if one fit with another. Because there was three, I looked right away. It was weird because I, I looked at them before I even started the game, so I knew it was going to be kind of weird. And then when I got in there, I was like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. And um, I went to change it, and then it wasn't there, and I always would forget or whatever. So that's kind of hung with the one control scheme. But I wonder if there's something better out there, because I know there's two others. How did you play? Just 
Do, were the, you the doing default. right stick for aim? The, 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 I don't remember if that was default or not. So I don't. It was like uh, you run around. Everything's all on one stick, and like, and then like you could hold an R, and then he stands still, and you can point uh. at that point. Oh, yeah, okay. So I was using C stick to aim. Me too. Oh. I don't think I had that. So it felt more like a twin you know, stick. Yeah, like third person. Yeah, mm-hmm. traditional third person aiming. Um the thing I ended up tweaking was inversion. So I found that I really liked inversion of controls for the R wing, because I think I'm just so used to the R wing yeah. pushing up to go down. But when I tried to apply that across the board, uh, I'm, that's not how I say third-person shooter. So I kept the R-Wing inverted, but the Landmaster controls and foot controls, I kept yeah. standard. I'm happy, but still I'm happy they gave you the options to separate that out, too. They, I, I could easily see that being yeah. an oversight at this era of video games. But I think also the precision in which you have control over that C-Stick was severely lacking. Like, mm. I think that it, it it needed... You know how now you can, like, uh, change the sensitivity on your stick? Like, there's none of that in this that you can adjust. And I think that would have gone a long way because I felt like I was always over-swinging. You know what I mean? Yeah. That between... It's like that and, like, the auto-aiming that it kind of does. Yeah. Like, they tend to clash. But, yeah, this is that early 2000s. Hey, we don't have everything optimized yet, so... Yeah. Got a lot of uh, inks in there. Yeah, tough times. But overall, I mean, hey, I can still play the game and get through the game and, and did get through the game. Um, and I even, like, did some of the stuff after the fact, after beating it, just, like, toying around with different missions just because it is it is fun to play, I think, generally speaking. Even at its... Well, okay. Maybe not even at its worst is it fun because at its worst, it's it's clunky. But, you know... Uh, I will read the first note that I wrote down. Uh, I guess this must have been in the first level, but I wrote, I really don't care when Slippy dies. <laughs> it's the very first thing. Um, that was one of the most frustrating things, I think, throughout the game is you and all Star Fox games, you always get these kind of pings as Fox to yeah. save one of the members of Star Team Star Fox. And... I never felt competent enough to do it always. It always felt like I was like erratically trying to locate them in the sky or on the ground or whatever. And I just like sometimes luckily got it or sometimes I missed it. Like I didn't get it and I, I should have, I felt like I was cheating. So like, that's a part that I kept comparing in my head to like 64 or something because it would happen in 64. But I think, that game was better at its reaction time when they talk to you because a lot there's a lot of delay where they're like fox get these guys off me i can't do it but i already shot them all then i gotta wait a second yeah they're like oh thanks and it's like yeah like how are you part of this group look i could do somersaults i can spin around deflect shots you can't do any of this but yet you're on this team and i and like nobody's saving my ass like it's, it's yeah okay. that was my big especially in those gripe. later levels no was saving your ass yeah where's my team so, there yeah that was my big gripe with corneria right so one of the later levels i think it's like level eight maybe or mm-hmm. seven you go to corneria which is fox's home planet and the beginning of the level you're on foot and nobody can help me while i'm on foot the level before like you're constantly like fox help and you're shooting from the sky to help them on foot or whatever but now I'm on foot and I'm just getting torn apart. And then I have to help Crystal. Like, that was part of the thing is, like, she's yeah. in the sky. I'm on foot and I need she to help dead. her. Like, dude, come and, on. What are you doing? And, like, the game loves to spam the same dialogue in a short amount of time. So, like, yeah. every time you have enemies behind you, Peppy's telling you to do a somersault. Every time. You do a somersault. Do a somersault. And none of your team... Does a somersault. If they knew how to do a somersault, you wouldn't have to save them. They would have saved themselves. Yeah. Well, that's what makes you the captain of the squad. That's the difference. They should be discharged. (laughs) Sorry, Slippy. And (laughs) I I wonder if, like, in Zero, for example, was there... Did they do better with, like, the AI partners? Where, Mm. like, you could command them to do things? Maybe. Um, And I I don't know. I haven't played it yet. Um, More on Zero later. But... Um, yeah, I, 
I liked the to to cut back to um less gameplay but more story like i really did like the aperoids as a villain in this and like i think at first when the aperoids are first introduced like you don't really i didn't really measure them or really consider them i just thought okay this is what we're fighting i got it i understand but by the end i'm like oh this is like the hive from halo or, or any other kind of hive mind villain in any game and i think that they do take it to really cool places um yeah very flood like very yeah did i say flood yeah hive you said hi why did you said hive minds i think that's where yeah but what is the hive there's the hive in something mass effect well yeah i know destiny actually it's not even in mass effect i take that back uh i think i'm thinking of destiny it could be but destiny. yeah the flood is what i'm thinking of thank you <laughs> um and I, but i liked that in this and i love that like you slowly kind of I don't know. They're taking over Team Star Fox. They're infecting uh, members of the team. Like, it starts with, uh, what's his face? Pigma, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, you get that weird, creepy, like, obey us, obey us. But by the end of it... I, and I also, for me, I kind of found the Aperoids as a metaphor for Namco. Because they felt like the ace combat team within namco are the aperoids taking over star fox and infecting it with rich storytelling and advanced <laughs> gameplay <laughs> like it was like a i don't know um but yeah i i love that all the way up to the end like i think the final boss worked really well in that regard i think the like emotional story beats they had with like it was kind of heavy like when they took over the general at the end of corneria like you're back on corneria and it's like, oh, okay, this is the place. Like, even though it didn't feel super familiar to me yeah. as kind of a, you know, not fair weather, but intermittent Star Fox participant. It's still like, you know, Corneria. And to have it end with General Pepper getting taken over. It's a little dark. I didn't expect it. That's an old dog. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of what else I I really liked. I, I know that for me, like Star Fox was one of the characters that I gravitated towards in Smash 64. Mm -hmm. And when I learned about wave dashing and wanted to get good at it, I remember practicing with Marth and Fox. And then after some like distance from trying to take playing smash seriously when i first went back to trying to get good at smash i wanted to get good with ness but ness is super slow and i felt like i should learn a fast character so that i can like think faster with a slow character and i went to fox and i ended up learning fox super super well in the wii u version and then applying a lot of that stuff to ness with combos and things and whatever but fox just always is a cool character like he's just generally a rad character and it's, i think he's fun to play as in smash so coming from that background and then going into star fox because i think even the original star fox i hadn't played until after playing smash i kind of always wanted more on foot stuff with fox because i was used to fox out of the ship and then right. you get it in this game a lot and it really just doesn't stack up like it's fine but it the air combat like by the end of the game it was like this is what i want and i felt good like missions nine uh, well mission 10 uh really being in the air i um i have a counter to the on foot stuff i don't think it's the mechanics of of that like the weapon system or the aim and right i don't like and the the aiming that's just stuff from that era of games i i can get my i can get past that I don't think it was the mechanic. I think it was, like, the level design or the mission structure. Yeah. I think that was the more frustrating part. Like, there's one where you're in that, uh, this, it's like a mid to later mission, like, six or five, where you're running around this, like, uh, ship and, like, trying to figure out where exactly to go. It was like, I was yelled at by, like, 30 times in a row to get on this elevator to go to the second floor and I didn't know where the yeah. fucking elevator was. And it was like, yeah. no prompt, yeah. nothing. 
and that is like, like it's a not across the board complaint. It's like not good to like look up for a level that's so vertical. You know, like I didn't mind going up. I thought that was really cool. Like you're kind of taking these generators, working your way up, but then like you would have to like go back down to go up, and there was no good way to kind of like scout where you're going. Yeah. And I think that's more on the level design than on the, just running around as Fox. Because Fox is quick. I, you know, he has his little like roll dodges. Um, he has different weapons, which I thought were cool. Um, you know, different weapons work better on different things. I feel like there was different scenarios where I wanted a rocket launcher. I thought the grenades were good. It was bringing me back some uh, Perfect Dark Mine gameplay a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, just some of those, just the way the mission structures were and the level design, I think, was the bigger flaw here. Not necessarily playing as Fox. I thought playing as Fox felt okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, the that mission in particular, I died as I completed it. And it was like, for a moment, it was a toss-up between, are they going to let me pass this, or do I have to restart the mission again? And thankfully, I got through it, but... Yeah. Um, but no, you brought up a good point about the weapons that Fox utilizes, because I found that for most of the game, I was just kind of using the standard blaster. But at certain points when you... I think especially like when you go back to Dinosaur Planet, you find the kind of underground weapons cache, and that I remember like really leaning into taking advantage of all those. And you kind of have to for some of those enemies in there. You, you really got to use different weapon types to take them out. The um just a this is a fun little like uh me play this. I like again, I think I said it from the, like I'm Star Fox 64 and like that's it. I really have not played another Star Fox game. So I didn't know which one was first when I was going through this. I didn't know this was after Adventure or this was before mm. Adventure. Then we got to the Dinosaur Island. I was like after got it after yeah <laughs> yeah tricky is like way smaller in adventure and his voice like i think it's the same voice actor too um if i'm not mistaken but his voice obviously was a lot higher in adventures um i also just to continue throwing out random star fox quotes here's another one i wrote down um take out those dirt bags with the landmaster think that was falco but i don't remember i didn't write down who actually said it yeah so that was a fun one probably if if not him I, I i could see peppy saying it but peppy usually doesn't do name calling no and shout speaking out of peppy yeah oh yeah go ahead, I was no, no, go ahead. Sh shout out to slippy towards the end for telling falco to shut up <laughs> that's yeah he stood up for himself a little bit there <laughs> yeah frog got a backbone frog got a back. but i like that they took peppy and moved peppy out of the field Mm -hmm. I, like just that little it's it's subtle right like obviously they did it because crystal was very popular after adventure so let's put crystal in team Star Fox. but i think narratively speaking it sets peppy apart because yeah i don't know it just shows growth right like peppy can move from being in the field to being their kind of like uh major commander or whatever commander, yeah. Not commander, i think but... i think adventures might have introduced that that makes sense um but yeah, I mean, like, Peppy came from Fox's dad's group. Like, right. it was it was James, Peppy, and Pigma. So, like, he was in two generations worth of Star Fox teams, and then, yeah, pretty much took General Pepper's spot. Yeah. Um, I think the other part that I really liked about this game was, it happened in the Corneria level, but when you end up teaming up with wolf and and mm -hmm. that whole like team star wolf uh which i think gave a little bit more legitimacy to the threat of the aperoids but also i don't know it was just a neat moment that i, I didn't expect and it was like cool to team up with because those characters are cool too like they're equally as rad as all of team star fox it's just they've always been under andros and that they're the bad guys too um, but it was neat teaming up here the level where they first show up and you have the objective of kind of like fighting them did did they fight you at all probably no, not they just kind of flew around being felt, stupid it felt so easy because i mean the objective was clearly shoot at them mm. and they weren't doing anything back and i was like waiting for this no. like epic like you know the the dog fight boss battle you know like i was waiting for something like and that never 
panned out, which was kind of sad, but no, I, I do like the fact that they intertwine, and I do agree, it does make that, like, we are enemies, but this foe is so bad that we need to team up, and then we'll worry about our differences later, kind of thing. Like, yeah, that, that works very well, and it works yeah. in this game. Uh, I, and I even like that set piece of, um, in Corneria, it's this, I think it's the second part of that level, where you're riding on Wolf's wing, and they're kind of like just trash talking yeah. one another the entire time. I kind of really enjoyed that whole uh, segment as well. Yeah, that was fun. And in that moment, like you can see that somebody knows how to fly and avoid things and, <laughs> and whatever. Like that was something positive. He's um, also very good on the sensors. He was calling things locking onto him before I saw them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was stuff like that by the end with flight and with like the team mechanics that I really enjoyed and, and I'm like bummed that we've not seen something like it since because I thought that those things made this game stand out and were they were a little different and kind of gave more legitimacy and like established like a deeper world within Star Fox than I think we've seen before. I don't know. I, I thought it worked really well. It's because the series keeps rebooting with every game. Yeah, can we talk about that? <laughs> like, well, before we move on to rebooting, is anyone like scared of shrimp anymore, or is anyone scared of shrimp now going forward? No, because of the aperoids? Yeah, man, they're just floating shrimp, just uh... attacking you. Like, <laughs> I saw the shrimp. I'm I didn't like, even think about it. Shrimp, harmless. Nope, right on my ass. Entire fucking boss fight. And I was like, all right. No, you should always fear shrimp, right? We should always fear shrimp, but. Yeah, they know it's... how to fry. <laughs> um, that, I guess, one more thing about the, as you're getting to that final boss fight, um, that stage nine mm -hmm. was the longest mission ever. I wrote down my complete time on stage nine because I was, I felt oh, like most of these I stages, I, I was between like Six and 12 minutes maybe at worst uh that one was 24 minutes and 26 seconds i feel just, like a majority of that time was just backtracking yep i was like, trying to navigate the fucking level i it, i thankfully so kind of remembered what to do but also the level design kind of showed itself like oh why does this look like an Unreal Tournament map or something? You got, like, your orange side and your purple side. I'm like, let me guess. There's two targets on the orange side, two targets on purple side. I was like, yep. Yep. Just gotta... What's what's the tank called? It's not it's an R something, right? Landmaster. Landmaster. Uh, land, all right, I'm sorry. The land, they made the Landmaster a platforming, like, vehicle. Yeah. And it was... does not work at all. I only no. used it to shoot a door open and got right back out. Yep. Yeah. But, like, taking out, like, that big fucking... Um, like snail thing the thing that had like that would cocoon up and like shoot the green things yeah. at you like fox can't do that like i need the the landmaster so like you need the i feel like you need the landmaster to get from like how do, whatever fucking like station to station wherever the objectives were inside and it was not good and really mark you, you hit the nail on the head it felt like an unreal tournament or like a, a quake level or something um yeah yeah well, i mean was, which it is because every time you beat a level, you unlock it in versus mode. So right, that right, was probably fair. the intent. But yeah, I, I again, I think that's where it's. It I didn't mind using the landmaster. I didn't mind running around as Fox. It was I hated navigating usually the levels they put me in. Yep, like that first time on yeah, foot. Like I'm. Granted, I kind of wish I would go back now knowing how to play Fox and the Landmaster a little bit better, but I feel like I enjoyed that level a lot, and it was like, all right, this is kind of okay. Like, not great, but it's good. Um, and then it would proceed to fall apart with the different level designs. Yeah. Yeah. So, the reboots. Uh, Star Fox, for... Anyone who's not super familiar with the the background of Star Fox, it was something. There's a, a long, deeper history of Star Fox that I'm not going to dive all the way into. But essentially, um, a little team from England made a game. What was it called? Mark X. If 
for the Game Boy that did some weird 3D graphics looking oh, stuff. Maybe, yeah. It impressed Nintendo quite a bit, and they started work on uh, what would later become Star Fox for the Super Nintendo. And the basic story of Star Fox was to fight Andros, save the Lilat system, hooray. Um, but it utilized 3D technology. You, uh, There were a lot of it's space combat, right? It's on rails, you're shooting, you're flying, you're dodging obstacles, you're flying under gates, you're collecting things, etc. Um, Star Fox 2 was meant to be a sequel to Star Fox. It added this kind of like persistent map where there's kind of always something moving or something to do on the actual map when you choose a mission. Um, it added new characters, it added new vehicles. However, it, by the time development was nearing its completion, it was close to the launch of... Uh, well, it was after the launch of the Saturn and the PS1. So it would have been weird to put out a game like that for Super Nintendo um, when Ultra 64 was on the rise. So it, it never got released, not until 2017 on the Super Nintendo uh, Classic, Mini, whatever the heck they called it. Yeah. So that never came out, and that would have been like the first direct sequel. So instead, we jump from Star Fox to Star Fox 64, which is a reimagining of the events of Star Fox 1 done on the Nintendo 64 um, with, you know, proper 3D. Then we get Adventure, we get this game, Assault, we get Command on the DS, which is a little bit different. Then we don't get anything until 2011, you get Star Fox 64 3D, a port of the 64 game for the 3DS. And then you get Star Fox Zero, which is a reboot of Star Fox 64 for the Wii U with a new control scheme. Um, and they just... I don't know why, and, and I, uh, I you think part of it is major title, Starlink, or whatever the fuck that game was. We're coming back to Starlink in a bit, buddy. <laughs> okay, don't you? Right. <laughs> not going to forget about Starlink. Uh, I think part of I think part of Star Fox, the uh, the why it's not so regularly revisited is that I feel like Star Fox games are always coupled with some sort of technological step forward. Yeah. The first game pushed 3D. The second game had that persistent map idea and, and kind of leaned more into multiple oh. playable characters, etc. It introduced a rumble pack. I'm th Star Fox 2. Oh, sorry. 64 is 2 in my head. <laughs> I know, yeah, right? Well, but 64. you're right. 64 added the Rumble Pack, right? And new 3D yeah. graphics and things like that. But yeah, the Rumble Pack was a huge thing. And now, like, Rumble is in everything, right? Um, what did Assault do, I guess, is my first question. Like, what was the... What do you think was the technological advance? So that was actually right? going to be a question I ended up asking you when it made sense. Like, I actually don't know what adventure... like. I can see the difference from 64 to this. Like, obviously, the Landmaster mm -hmm. and being on foot. And the mm -hmm. open level design. I didn't know if Adventure did any of that. Or this was new to this. Uh, so, Adventure is based... Uh, it is literally a Zelda clone. It plays just like Ocarina of Time. But you are a fox with a staff instead of a sword. Um, right. Oh, so is that different? Yes, and the only time you're in our wing is to travel between areas, and then the final boss fight is the only traditional Star Fox moment. Okay, so it okay, so this so really... most people don't even count that game because it, right, that, that yeah, was, I knew, I knew, I didn't realize how different it was. Uh, I knew yeah. it's, I knew, it was, I know it's development history, but I didn't know. Okay, yeah. so I guess it tries to do open level concepts. Mm. I, 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 right, like. Yeah. Because uh, on foot stuff was technically in 64, but you had to unlock that yeah. with a very hard requirement. And um, that was only used for versus mode. Yep. Yeah, because, I mean, think, I'm trying to think of the, of the era here. Like, how many games are giving you a level like an open level and having you complete an objective or multiple objectives inside that area and letting you run around however you like <sighs> yeah 
Yeah, I mean... Like this in that way, yeah, because I think even for Star Fox, <clears throat> most Star Fox games would have been on rails, right? So I think especially for Star Fox, this is this was newer for that. But yeah, I think a lot of games always kind of were pushing you in the right direction. And this is also not Nintendo. Yeah. So that's probably why this one feels probably a little more... Eh. Yeah, but even, like, follow-up question, has there ever been a Star Fox game that's been perfect all the way around? 64. Yeah, I think you're right, probably. I don't remember 64 enough to make that claim, but I do remember 64 fondly. Yeah. The the, the branching paths, the the, the interactions, the characters, the the gameplay, the the way that it's not stingy with power-ups... Um, yeah, because man, if you if you fail an assault, they fucking punish you. So, pardon my language, but like, <laughs> um, finding like the lasers to get the double lasers and then the blue lasers, that is like finding a unicorn in the woods or something. It like happens maybe once or twice, but it but once you die, you are not going to get the blue lasers ever again. You're just you're, first you're stuck with single laser. So good luck at a boss fight if you failed at it. Maybe a one double laser power up somewhere. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they felt like it, it, they were rare to find for some reason. I just that was a little jarring coming from with like a lot of my experience in '64, where that stuff seemed pretty easy to get and bombs and all that. I. Would you ever play a visual novel Star Fox? I I mean, I I would be curious enough to look into it. Um, but it marketing would have to do a good job of being like, <laughs> "Hey, we're not going to make you pay full price for this. This is my this is probably like a pre-order bonus or like a, just a little fun thing in between." Like you know what I mean? Like you can't market it like all the other Star Fox games. It has to, it has to be aware of what it is. I don't, I don't care about Star Fox's narrative that much. So no. They had those cool comics back in the Nintendo Power stuff that was like during the Super Nintendo era. Yeah. I just, art. it's just what it, like I think of Star Fox, and I don't think it's lore. I like I think of on rail shooter and like you can branch off that sure like assault try to do I just you're gonna, I don't think you're gonna sell me of Star Fox visual novel. Is there a Nintendo property that would, that would make a good visual novel? Yeah, I thought Fire Emblem was already a thing. Hey, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Earthbound. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Uh... And it has just the right amount of ridiculousness, too, to, like, really play with some expectations. Like, is this just pure... When we say visual novel, is it just pure visual novel? Or does it have, like, light gameplay elements? Like, in- I, I just think about the, kind of the, you know, there's the background in puppetry and those types of things. I think, like, the fact that there is so much, like, on-screen text and things like that, like, they could do one. Do a, a weird mobile game spinoff of it. Um. I I really ask that one because Digimon survives on the brain, but two because like how important is the story in Star Fox? I felt like this had more story than ever, and I actually was engaged with it, and I thought the places that it went to were interesting. However, for me, Star Fox is yeah, like Matt said, like it's shooting. Let me let me fly yeah. a ship and shoot stuff. I mean, that's the Nintendo way. Like, story is not their main priority when they make these games. It was never. So that's why yeah. they didn't care about rebooting it however many times. Um, but Star Fox Command on the DS, that you can get, like, ten different endings, apparently, like, like based on whatever you do and who you save and all that stuff. Well, that kind of goes back to 64 then, right? Like, where, like, you're... 
I, don't, I guess maybe not endings, but like your level pathing, you know, depending on if you do a certain thing here or a certain thing there, it takes you to a different path of the, uh, you know, yeah. from A and, to B. And Command plays a lot like Star Fox 2. It's pretty much, yeah. it's pretty much that, just more fleshed out. So there were a couple of previews for this game from its first showing at E3 2003. Uh, one of these says, I'm just going to read it uh, beat for beat. Star Fox Armada? Star Fox 2? Whatever the name, the story is the same. Namco has plenty to improve before release. We've heard that. Although Namco and Nintendo's unusual partnership requires Star Fox team to be separated from other Nintendo um, from other Namco workers, staffers have been drifting in and out of the team, uh, or in and out of st- Team Star Fox for a while now. Judging by the lame early version on display at the show, we don't blame them. It seems like they kind of had trouble maintaining development staff uh, and putting people dedicated to this project for a while. I feel and then, that's apparent. Yeah, because you can feel like there's a lot of different clashing ways of game making in this. Mm -hmm. Um, And then this is from EGM, yeah, EGM that same year. Um, Star Fox 2, as it's being referred to here, as a sequel to Adventure. After a brief stint with some on-foot adventures, Fox and crew are back to take on a new threat, this time with more vehicular combat reminiscent of the pre-GameCube Star Fox games. Two players can play cooperatively and four-player battles return. Uh, When asked how was it, Dan Shu of EGM says, The only part of Star Fox 2 that Nintendo had to show was versus play, and the only thing I have to say is bleh. You know those forgettable Nintendo 64 titles, the ones with generic deathmatch modes that no one cared to play? That's what this short demo of Star Fox 2 was like. The so-so graphics reinforce that too. Run around or hop in a tank or an R-wing ship, then blast the other guy until he dies. If the main game, which we haven't seen yet, can duplicate the original's intense space combat action, however, I'll be a happy fox. So I think the game did improve based on those initial impressions from its first showing at E3, and I think Nintendo took the feedback of that show to heart, uh, and Namco as well. But do you feel like Star Fox Assault was able to duplicate the original's intense space combat action? I think it fine-tuned how you can fly in an R-Wing, um, but at the same time, it felt a little limiting for some reason. Like, having one button dedicated to barrel, like barrel rolling is convenient but if i want to make sharp turns um you cannot just do r or l to go the way that you want to go because r is great yeah that was a little weird not being able to do that like like, like you always you always have to spin first and then just whatever direction that you were spinning in that's the way you're going to sharp turn if you keep holding it in um and another weird thing I noticed with this game, with the like technical side of it, it was like if you're doing just a full on R wing level, it's sixty frames. But then it's thirty frames when you do anything else. Mm. And uh it, it was just that was hard to ignore and the draw distance on enemies popping up for for some reason was like super short. Like I could see the names yeah. of who of my of my friends or who Star were being Wolf, attacked. But then yeah. it had to be like like all the way up their butt just for them to appear i just and like I that's don't... a really good point and a lot of times by the time you got that close they would bypass you and you couldn't actually shoot what you needed to shoot anyway which yeah 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 the home i did I, the, yeah. I was gonna say, when you did homing missiles too if they disappeared they homing would have hit them yeah that was yeah yeah i did really like this game overall though um like I, I thought it was a really solid entry it made me reinvigorated to revisit more star fox stuff and kind of actively want a new star fox property which uh, i guess let's talk about that part so uh, did you guys keep track of your no you guys have I guess mm, no. uh no. you didn't keep track of how many times you wanted to buy star fox zero while you were playing this is <laughs> that just me uh, I definitely thought about, like, hoping to find a way to bring it to Switch. 
I almost bought it on eBay, but it was like 20 bucks and I was like, eh, okay, it's not that bad price-wise yet, you know, because I feel like Wii U games are going to get stupid at some point. And I was like, well, 20 bucks, I can just order that whenever. I don't need it that badly. Then I was in a retro video game shop and they had it and I was like, oh, I'll grab it. It was 30 bucks and knowing I could get it for 20 on eBay. <laughs> eh. Then we've got like a couple weeks left on the Wii U eShop before it dies forever. And by a couple, I mean like you have like from the date of this publication, you have like, I think two, no, I don't know, 15 days or something um, to make purchases on the eShop. Or you can still make, shoot, I don't remember what it is. I think it's the last bit. You can't add your credit card. You can't add funds using a credit card. But if you have an eShop gift card, that's what it is. You can add yeah. that to your Wii U wallet for the next two weeks. So I know for a fact I'm buying Twilight Princess. Because I don't have that on Wii U yet. And, and I want one. it. And it, yeah, right. Um, I kept putting it off for years and years. And, and I, I should just do it before it's gone forever. Or, you know, whatever. Star Fox Zero was another one, though, where I was like, it's 50 bucks digitally. Do I really want it that badly? Uh, and I think the answer is no, I don't. Um, which yeah. begs the question, what do I play now? Or I guess, did you guys have the itch for more Star Fox after this? And did you scratch it? Uh, I'm probably going to be the only person, not just in this podcast, but even outside of it, that might be saying this, but I kind of want to replay Adventures. Uh, knowing what adventures is after you described it to me the other week, I kind of do too. I don't think it's going to scratch the itch, but no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Matt? Uh, I mean, I think I have the Star Fox itch scratch. Knowing what's out there, right? Like the fact that there's so many reimaginings of. 64 which is one which is also zero like it, it i've played 60 like again it, it's been a long time i don't remember a lot of it i guess I, I probably could benefit from replaying it but like this didn't leave me hungry to go back um i would easily like look at a new Star Fox and be excited potentially but i um i i i think it needs to leave the on rail stuff, and I think it it or at, like, at least get away from it, get away from it like with how zero kind of revisit like get away from that old stuff, <laughs> maybe do a reboot, but do like a proper one where it's something new, and I like again, I like the ideas of this game, it's just the level design just was not there. I like the fact that like yeah. if you gave me like it doesn't have to be dumped at me if, if all at the same time, but if you gave me a decent size world i'm not like these these were decent enough size i think and give me a series of five objectives inside that world where it involves me getting into space out of space like um hopping on foot for a little bit and the mechanics aren't terrible and then going and you know hopping back into space and kind of having it all almost kind of do what like um uh, um oh what's the game oh, Fuck! What's the game that um I'm so bad at recalling things. Uh, PS PlayStation Four game touted for forever came out sucked and has just been really good ever since. Post release content space game No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. Have something like that where like you transition to the planet surface out to outer space, but like not too much farther than I don't need a whole open world. But like have these make it feel big make it feel like what uh star wars battlefront like should be where it's like these big federate like these big galactic battles that happen on foot and in the air and you're going back and forth because you are like superhero what yeah. if i told you there's a game where you can be in the r wing but still be on foot at the same time the fuck <laughs> well I, I, are you talking about 2018's starlink battle for oh, atlas right right uh, I played most of, well, maybe half of that game, and I, like, that might be where I go next. So after I beat Assault, literally, like, I, I think I beat Assault, uh, I don't know, like, 11 in the morning or something like that, and I spent 
the next few hours toying around with stuff. And I played... I So, in terms of games I've completed, it's been 1 and 64 are the main... And then Assault was the third one that I'd completed. Um, but I've never completed 2. So I did go back to 2 a bit and played some of that. I, I um, like 2. Yeah, two's pretty good. And then I keep toying around with 64 in its different iterations, and I'm trying to figure out which version I like better on 64, whether I like the original um, or the 3DS version. And I don't I don't know which uh, one. I think I like, I don't know, with me, I, I guess the nostalgia is really the factor, but like 64, just everything about it. Like, I, I like that low poly visual style and the way that characters deliver their lines. It's it's just unmatched to me. Yeah. Um, but Battle for Atlas, the Starlink, which if someone's listening and you're like, why do you keep saying Starlink? That's not how you say Star Fox. It was a Ubisoft game that was uh, meant to be toys to life uh, space battle. So you would buy physical toy ships and then you could kind of mix and match parts on the fly. And that would build your ship in the game that you would use and, and take on missions and whatever. Um, the big selling point for the Switch version is that it featured uh, Star Fox and friends and the R-Wing as as a ship and you could mount different weapon types on it and things like that. And I remember buying the digital deluxe version of that game on a deep sale at like Christmas or something, uh, maybe a year after it came out for $8. And that seemed about right um honestly i think there's a lot of game there the problem is it's a ubisoft game from the late 2010s so it's just rife with open world checkpoints and collect these things and do these dumb missions and and whatever it just yeah uh and to mark's point like it, the the one neat thing is like you do fly in and out of the atmosphere so you're kind of landing on planets and then leaving the planet that's a really neat like wow why haven't they done this with star fox before um because you can then take to the skies or the space the atmosphere and do cool star fox like space combat like it's fun it feels like an evolution of star fox but then when you're on the ground yeah like you're like just weirdly hovering and you're doing these like strafing flight things where you're fighting bosses and mini bosses like on the ground and taking out bases and i don't know it it, it plays like a weird star fox sequel that shouldn't exist and i kind of want to play more of it but i feel like the second i reinstall it boot it back up i'll remember why i stopped so maybe not you know what maybe this would be the best time to jump into bayonetta 2 oh there's a whole like if you put the star fox amiibo or fox mccloud amiibo oh on, yeah she gets that skin but also yeah. there's a there's a flight level where you're in our wing instead shooting at everything yeah, which is why Platinum got the gig making Star Fox Zero, so it all comes full. Yeah. Maybe not, then. So, while you were describing that, I think I found out the Star Fox sequel that I want. Combine uh, PlayStation 3 <laughs> bust Starhawk with a Mushu game. Uh. Has there ever been a Space Mushu game? I don't think so. Kind of want to. I kind of want Fox to feel like a bad. Like I don't know. It's like he never feels like a badass, and he can be. Like I've yeah, like, seen yeah. Smash footage. He's a badass. <laughs> like it would be cool if, like, you could do more with your team. Have like, have like assigned like special moves where they all do like a like a synchronized attack, or like maybe they come from four directions yeah. and like go through something, or like yeah, like, just more stuff like that would be pretty cool. But yeah, like, that would be cool, and also, like, taking advantage of the map and, like, sending out, like, have them capable, at least, right? And then having them send them out to the sector and kind of man it while you're taking care of the, the bad area. And then, then you come and reinforce them, and then you can come and do special attacks, you can build a meter or something stupid. Um, yeah, I, I just, I really, I think that's, like, the next evolution of a game like this it doesn't have to be star fox but like this ground to air like just getting in and out of your your car or your vehicle and going like, in, into combat and just having these big massive battles um 
I, 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 that's yeah. like what I want in, in the next Star Fox game, I guess. I said it already, like, but yeah, just reinforce four, it. Like, Four-player co-op, possibly make your own furry, and just beat ass. And then at the same time, get really fucking cool and clever with it. Have another co-op campaign with you, man, and Pikmin in this small battlefield trying to get the shelter. <laughs> Oh man. Let's really just let's just set up the Nintendo MMO right now with Star Fox and Pikmin. I think that could work really well. It's almost like what um not Star Citizen, what's the other one? Well one has an economist to man their economy, space sim, like spa- Eve Online. Eve Online. It's kinda of like what Eve was trying to do with their shooter on PlayStation 3. Yeah. I, yeah, I like the concept of merging games like that. It, Dude, yeah, sign me it, up. Uh, I play that on hard. Do you think yeah, that? Imagine how fucking cool that would be. This fucking Pikmin it would just be really dodging rad. bombs and shit. That's the new Pikmin. That's really why they rad. held back Pikmin Four because they're blending it into the next Star Fox game. Do you think there's any? Um, do you think there's Star Fox Racer? Rumors from a few years back were actually real, or were they just I, a perpetual echo of someone's lie? I bet there's some truth to it. I, I'm I'm always a fan of if there's smoke, there's a fire somewhere. How true it was, I don't know, but that, that was at least pitched in a board somewhere. Whether how much of that idea snowballed into something legitimate, that's the part I'm, I I don't know, but I. Yeah, I, it was at least in pre-production That's at some point. Final question. When do we see Star Fox again? I feel like we would have already had the Netflix stuff not been ruined. Mm, right. Because we were supposed to get a full like TV series or whatever. Oh, and I forgot then... about that. Uh, that got leaked, so then Nintendo scrapped it. I completely forgot about that. You think that could change now that Nintendo owns a an animation studio? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's always the... I feel like even if they do scrap something, it's never really scrapped. You know? Sure. Yeah. I think they want to see a Mario movie goes and then they'll start expanding to their properties like if they can't hit a home run with their number one mascot it's going to be tough to justify a star fox movie yeah well i think the other side of it too i think them buying this animation company is very much like okay this whole project working with other people it's much better if we just do it ourselves so let's just buy something to do it ourselves (laughs) yeah and i'd like to see them use that animation for like some um, game work like tell like have cutscenes with the with the animation studio stuff kind of like what Blizzard does well that was an interesting thing in Star Fox Zero like Star Fox Zero has pretty cool hand drawn animation stuff and it had like a neat I don't know world built around it but um, yeah I feel like we're going to hear about Star Fox in the next year I really do. I I think Star Fox is on a good five-year cycle, roughly. Between every release, we've had kind of a four- to six-year break, and it's now been six years since Zero came out. I think we're ready for another another go at it. I'm going to give it another four years on top of that, then. Oh, gosh. It's a shame. 10 years of Star Fox Zero. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's other stuff that you need to get out. Well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've reached the point in the episode where we rank Star Fox Assault against the rest of our list. If you want to see the entire list, check it out at thefreecheese.com slash the list. And we've got the tough task of figuring out where within our 28 games ranked so far Star Fox Assault sits. Um, 
I'm pretty high on this one, so actually, I, this is tough. How how high? Oh well, Method Man. Um, you know what? I I think I like it. I don't know if I'm above or below Advanced Buster Hawk Glalancer, but I'm right there. Yeah, I don't I, think it beats Tricky. Funny enough, I was like, this kind of feels like the Minish Cap of Star Fox games. <laughs> but it's, I like this better than Minish Cap. Yeah. So funny. I have it. My gut was to put it between Glalancer and Minish Cap. Wow. Okay. That was my. Is it the new fourteen? Yeah that that was my exact gut feeling. So when you said above or below Glay Lancer, I think you nailed it. I like Glay. So the thing is, I like Glay Lancer better because it's consistent all the way through. Um, Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Star Fox has its lows. Uh, it has its highs though. I think some of its gameplay segments are better than some Glay Lancer segments. But like Glay Lancer gets yeah. unique too. Uh, Mark brought it up in that episode. Like the level when you fight around the ship. Uh, it's a yeah. cool thing you don't see a lot in those types of games. I think so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I, th- I think Lay Lancer's better, but I definitely preferred playing this more than Minish Cap, and I would r- much rather return to this. Also, this makes me want to. This would make me want to revisit a Star Fox property more so than Minish Cap makes me want to revisit a Zelda property too. Wow. Okay. Mark, any argument for keeping Minish Cap over it? Um, I guess Minish Cap has a better polish. You know, like it's, I mean, and, and that's yeah. and that's another game that's not really all Nintendo. Like that's a Capcom joint. Yeah. Um, but I do like Star Fox's uh, gameplay length. I think it's 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 a good enough time to get through it. Despite its blemishes, I do like that it is a continuing story. If you're familiar yeah. with that franchise, um, yeah, I think overall, I had a, I, I think a better time going through that, despite the downsides. I think the okay. f- fact that at, at Star Fox's best level might be level ten makes it feels like you kind of grind it through the work to get to the good part. So. Maybe that was my most frustrating part. <laughs> it's a, it's a hard part. level. There's definitely difficulty spike, but I felt like that was like the most Star Fox 64 I got out of this game. Yeah, I mean it's cool to have a checkpoint system, but at the same time, I hate it where the checkpoint was. And I was like, all right, this is a bad checkpoint. But at least Multiple. at least I didn't have to start it over though. True. And unlike Minish Cap, I actually finished this one. Yeah, that's yeah. Good point. Yep. All right, there's. I think there's different lengths of time here in this game. Well, I mean, well, I mean, no, I mean, even before the podcast, I mean, like, it, like outside of it, when I first played Minish Cap way back, I got, uh, okay. I was, right. I was at the final fight, like final, final fight, form two of Vitey, and I never beat it, or never went back to wanting to beat it. And Star Fox Assault, it, I've, I've beaten a couple times. Yeah. Minish Caps, that, that final boss is not fun. It's tedious. Where this yeah. is like... Yeah, checkpointing ass- aside, I think the final boss in Assault was really fun. Star Fox can be pretty mindless, and that's a plus in this yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got the shrimp, man. Watch out for shrimp. Yeah, buddy. Well, I hope we don't have to wait too much longer for Star Fox. Maybe... Maybe we'll get that surprise Nintendo Direct... Or maybe by the time this airs, we will have already had it. What if? What about that, huh? If man, I don't know. I hope it'd be something. But, yeah, it'd be weird for continuity in terms of this podcast. <laughs> but I'd be happy to have known to know in the future. It would be nice to know when sports stories finally coming out. You know, <laughs> ah, you got a little bit, buddy. <laughs> you and Silk Song, you know, um. <laughs> That's going to do it for us, but that's not all we have. Of course, we've got, uh, that was only, what, number 29 on the list? So we've got another 16 games to go, including next week's. 
Quake. Just in time for QuakeCon, where hopefully we might see the future of Quake, we're going to go back to the beginning of it, revisit the game that started it all. Or I guess the game that continued it all, because Doom kind of started it all, right? And Wolfenstein kind of started that. But Quake, the the classic 1996 id first-person shooter. 3D. Topic next week. 3D proper first-person yeah. shooter. Yeah, the one, man. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Of course, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener, for listening. Until next time, take care.